how do you reduce the number of security exploits that can happen in your smart contract how do you make sure that your machine knows that you're making a mistake and you don't need to keep testing your code again and again by hand what's up clubbers gm 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 welcome to web3 club and in today's video we are going to learn how do we test our smart contracts in all of the other videos what we have done is that we have deployed the smart contract and then test it by clicking doing all the things manually putting the values figuring out what is the correct response whether it is correct or not and what not right but in today's video what we're going to learn is how do we make sure that we can write some code which can do that for us so that every time we make a change we can just run our code our test code and be certain that there's nothing that has broken but before we get started please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't if you want to send me a message there's my email address in my about section on youtube channel if you want to suggest a new video please let me know into the youtube comments and if you have a specific question come join my discord server there are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out the link to discord is in the description down below all right with that said let's get started so there are a bunch of ways to write your tests for your smart contracts today we are going to focus on hard hat if you want to see other frameworks like truffle like foundry and others please let me know in the youtube comments and i will try to make a video on that as well but today we are going to focus on hard hat hard hat gives you a lot of tools already so that you can just get started and there are a bunch of ways with which you can leverage hard hat plugins and whatnot to make your development life much more easier first thing first you will need to install hard hat and to do that just go to their website hardhat.org go to tutorial and in the overview you will see what you will end up doing and then go to setting up the environment and just go through this uh, they have the instruction for linux mac and windows to make sure that you know how to set up hard hat i've already done that so i'm not not going to do that again this is my terminal and it is in a new folder which is empty as you can see after i have installed hard hat and node.js i will have a command called npx hard hat in it what it will do is initialize the current folder so that we can use hard hat so i press enter and it is saying it is asking me whether i want to install the following package named hard hat and yes i do so now it is asking if i want to create a javascript project or a typescript project i want a javascript project i press enter the root is fine and I want to add the git ignore file. Now it is asking do I want to install these dependencies and of course I do want them. These dependencies will later help me with running my test and now we just wait for the installation to complete. And that is it the installation is now done and you can see that there are a bunch of files that have been included now. So let me open this in my text editor which is sublime. All right, now that it is open in Sublime, you can see that there are a bunch of files present over here. Uh, the one that I'm looking for is called lock.sol. So this is a new contract that sort of comes up whenever I initialize a hard hat project. Now what this contract does is it locks our ETH or the native token of the blockchain. So Matic for Polygon chain, BNB for Binance Smart Chain, right? So it locks that token for the time till which we have provided the unlock time so if the unlock time is let's say one year down the road so the eth or the token basically will be locked for one year and only then we will be able to call the withdraw function and receive those tokens to our address so this is the whole code the entirety of the code the code is very small as you can see the constructor is payable so we will be able to send the eth we also set the unlock time in the constructor itself so whatever time we send uh, that will be the unlock time we also require that the time is more than the current blockchain time and we also set the owner as the message sender so whoever deploys this contract is the owner of this contract and then there's a withdraw function which first requires that the timestamp the current time is greater than the unlock time and it also requires that message sender is the owner after that it emits the withdrawal event 
and it transfers the amount to the owner. So once this is done, you can see that there is another folder called test where lock.js is present. Now this is the test file that we will use, that we will run to make sure that the code behaves properly and the way to run this file is you just simply go here and write npx hardhat test all right and then you press enter because this is the first time i'm doing it it will compile the contract and then do it once the compilation is done oops there's a power power failure so i'm using my phone's flashlight to make sure this works but anyway, coming back, we will run this file once the compilation is done. We run this test code and then it basically says all the tests have passed. So what you can do is you can go through the tests and figure out what they're doing. So I'm just going to quickly run you through the tests and make sure that you understand what, what the general things are happening. And after that, we'll make some changes to lock.sol and then write tests for those changes. So firstly, you will see that there is something which has been uh, you know, required, which is fine. Uh, you generally require a lot of things for any, any JavaScript file. You also require this uh, expect function from the chai uh, library, which is the testing library that we are using. We have this time and load fixture, uh, which is something that I'll explain later on. So now there's this describe block. So what describe does is whatever you write as this over here, it shows up, shows up over here like this. So we are testing the log.sol. So we are we have written describe log. So everything that we put after that comes and inside the indentation of that log. So every other describe log will be like this, like just you know, besides the starting of logs with like basically a tab of two spaces. Again, uh, to put this deployment thing, you can see over here, describe deployment, the, the deployment sort of comes over here. After that, we have this it block, which, you know, has should set the right unlock time this is the that is exactly what, you know, comes up over here. So these are the tests that we have run and describe is the way to sort of categorize them, group them. All right. So the first thing that we have over here is a function called deploy one year lock fixture. Now, what is a fixture? A fixture is the dummy data that you basically create before the test runs and then you use whole code on that dummy data. So now how do we do that over here? What we do is we basically deploy this, the log.sol smart contract with some values and then we test that smart contract with whatever values that we had earlier given and make sure that it functions correctly. So the function deploy one year lock fixture basically what it does is uh, takes the current time and adds one year to that and then deploys with that unlock time. The locked amount is one GUI so we will set one GUI which is 1 into 10 to the power 9. Uh, the unlock time is the current time, you know, we figure out what is the current time plus one year in seconds. So we basically lock it for one year. Then what we also do is the power is here. <laughs> so then what we also do is we basically get uh, two accounts from ethers. One is one we call the owner and the other we call the other. And then what we do is we instantiate a lock object from the lock file and then we deploy that with the unlock time and we set some value now if we don't put anything else what it will do is it will take the first account that ethers dot get signers returns so the first account that it returned was the owner account and then this uh, fixture function returns all of these things after that it is very simple every test that we write uh, it it will start with it as the as the function the first argument is the name of the test and the second argument will be a function all right so we have an async function over here we write lock and unlock time these are the two things that we want from the fixture so we write await load fixture so what load fixture does is calls this once and then stores the state of the chain so that whenever you want to use this fixture again uh, we can just go back and uh, go back to that state of the chain. So uh, await load fixture and then in the load fixture we give it the name of the function. So it calls this function, it returns the fixture. So or from the fixture what we need are two things, lock which is the name of the contract, so the contracts um, instance 
and unlock time which is the time at which the contract will unlock and then we have this special thing called expect so in expect what we put is the value that we are receiving and after that we basically make sure that that value is sort of correct so to do that we write expect and then await lock dot unlock time so lock dot unlock time returns a basically a promise to get the unlock time so we await that promise to get the actual value after that we put that into the expect and then with the expect we write dot two dot equal which means to equal <laughs> you know as it says unlock time so what we are testing over here is that the lock dot unlock time is same as the unlock time that we have actually set all right so if that is true the test should pass so let's just make some changes and we what we'll do is we will put that it should not equal the unlock time and you will see that one test has failed and should test should set the right unlock time failed because our expectation is that it should not be equal but in reality it was equal but that is exactly what we want so you know we leave it to that similarly we can test uh, the owner was set correctly we can also test the amount was you know set correctly uh, to get that amount you can await the the current balance of lock uh, lock address all right so uh, this is how you figure out the balance from ether. So write ethers dot provided or get balance, and then we and we send the address of the smart contract, which is lock dot address, and that is how we figure out the the balance, and we make sure that the balance was same as the locked amount. And another thing that we wanted to test was if you see here, we have a required block which says the the unlock time should be more than the current time. So to do that, what we, we have basically done is instead of creating using a fixture, we create a new instance of the smart contract. And to, to create that, we figure out the current, uh, the current time first. We get the lock object so that we can deploy that. And then we deploy it with the current time with value one. And we get, we, we get an error, which you know, you can see to be reverted with uh, unlock time should be in the future which is exactly the text over here so that is how you test whether uh, you know it throws an error or not another thing that we have over here is with withdrawals uh, you can see that uh, in withdrawals there are one two three four five tests which you know you can then later on go through yourself it's very easy to figure out what is going on over here one thing that you will need to understand is time dot increase to which you know it what it does is it, it increases the current uh, time for blockchain and we increase it to um, unlock time so once we do that what we can do is whenever we call this function we can you know test whether at that time we will receive our our eth our tokens back so you can see that this is the function this is the test where we are making sure that everything works fine so we we, we load a fixture we increase the time uh, to the unlock time and then we expect that log dot withdraw should not give an error all right one more thing that we you will probably need to understand is how do you test whether uh, an event was emitted and you can test that with expect log dot withdraw you know that works after that you test uh, you know with dot two dot emit the emit takes two parameters the first is the lock the smart contract instance and then the withdrawal the name of the event so it makes sure that withdrawal event was emitted and uh, these are the arguments dot with arguments with args actually these are the arguments with which they were emitted and to figure out whether an amount was you know sent to a specific address you have this dot to change ether balances with two change ether balances what you can figure out is for owner and lock the balance should should change by locked amount and negative locked amount so the balance of lock should go down by locked amount and the balance of owner should go up by locked amount this is basically a very quick run through of uh, the log.js and they basically have all the simple tests uh, that you will need to figure out how do you test your stuff but today we are going to make some changes to log.sol and figure out whether our tests are working or not. One thing that let's say I want to add is a function called set unlock time. All right. 
and uh, this function basically accepts an unlock time and uh, we want to make sure that this function is only called by the owner all right otherwise what we'll write is you aren't the owner once you know we are sure that this is the owner what we can set is unlock time equals underscore unlock time so we are not checking whether you know the block dot timestamp is less than the unlock time okay great so uh, the next thing that we can do is we can create a new describe block uh, to do that we just write describe and with that we write change unlock time so this is what we are describing we have tests over here to describe them and then the first thing that i want to test is it should not allow anyone it should not allow non owners to change the unlock time okay again we'll need a function over here i'll just make it an async function uh, because i'm pretty sure i'll need an await somewhere so the first thing that i will want is i can just get um, the I can get the lock, uh, the, the, the fixture loaded uh, with that. I get the lock object. I also need another account, I believe. Uh, what is the name? Other account, sorry, not other, not another. So we have lock and other account. Okay. So with lock and other account, what I can do is I can expect lock dot connect. So when I write log dot connect, it means make this call from the account that I'm connecting with. So log dot connect means I, now the object is connected to the other account. So whenever I make a call, it will go from this other account. All right. And then dot the name of this function dot set unlock time uh, and the set unlock time. I let's let's just set it to thousand. And then what I want is that this needs to be reverted. So this will be to be reverted with and the text that it needs to give out with the error is this. All right. And I will await this because otherwise it will just, you know, keep on running. And also the other thing that I want to expect is that the lock dot unlock time will not change. So uh, I can get the old unlock time over here uh, from the fixture. And I will need to make sure that the lock dot unlock time to equal unlock time. All right. And now instead of putting await outside of the expect, I will put await over here because when I put await over here, what it does is it waits to fetch the value and then feeds it to expect. But over here, trying to basically make sure that this gives out an error. So I'm putting the await outside of the expect block generally you want it inside the expect uh, you know parentheses unless you're you know you're trying to check for the errors in that case you put it outside all right uh, so i've written a single test now what i can do is i can see if this passes just like that you can see that there was an error which i could have figured out at compile time but anyway <laughs> uh, so i need to make this an external call okay external or public both would have done and you can see that change unlock time test sort of worked which is great for us all right and another thing that you know we want to do is that it should allow owner to change the unlock time okay so uh, again this needs to be an async function and when i want to allow the owner to change the unlock time uh, i think i will need to load the fixture again with um i believe the owner account yeah and the unlock time is fine i guess i don't need anything else uh, the next thing that i will do is call lock dot unlock time all right uh, sorry lock dot set unlock time and i'll set the unlock time to let's say 1000 for some reason and i'm just going to call this directly once this is done what I expect is that the lock dot unlock time uh, that you know I can await over here it should be equal to thousand. All right. So this is this one test that I want to run now, and 
I hope that it passes and it definitely does. Great. Now, one thing that I did not add in the code was that there's no requirement of block dot timestamp being less than unlock time. Let's say I wanted that to be the feature. So what I will do is I'll write this as a test that it should not allow older time to be set as unlock time. All right. We will need another async function over here. So let me just load the fixture once again. This time I expect uh, lock dot set unlock time uh, with thousand because I'm hundred percent certain thousand is less than block dot current time. Or actually, if you want to do it the right way, that will be to figure out from time dot you know latest. Okay, so time dot latest minus one. So I'll await. Uh, Time dot latest and subtract that by one. So I'll get the uh, one one second ago from here. Uh, so I I have one second ago. Uh, so I'll set that as the value. And now this should revert with uh, let's say unlock time should be in the future. Okay. Now this test is bound to give me an error, and I forgot to await it. So I'll await the expect because I want to give this an error. Okay, so I'll just run this over here, and you can see that the, you know this did not give me an error. The test should, like test should have failed. Uh, test actually failed, um, and it failed because you know it did not give us an error. So to fix that, we go here. We write require block dot timestamp should be less than unlock time. All right. If it is not the case, we simply uh, uh, return with we simply throw an error with that message unlock time should be in the future. And now if I run the test, it should work and it did not work. And why did it not work? Well, if you see uh, the test that we were trying to run, that one worked, but the older one did not work. And why did it not work? Because we have set the thousand as the time all right so instead of that what i'll do is just copy this and i'll just write one second uh, later okay and instead of minus one i'll just add plus one and now i have one second later i'll set that as the value and now if i try to run this everything should work and it did not work again uh, because I believe one second is not enough. <laughs> Actually, this is one microsecond, not even second. So let me just add a few zeros to this. And this time it did work. Great. This is how you write tests for your smart contract. Now, whatever function you want to call, you can just call with log dot something and you can you will be able to call that function uh, from here. If it is a public variable, you can just call log dot, you know, variable with a with the brackets there so it will return the value and that is how basically this thing works this is how you write tests with hard hat there are a bunch of other ways to write tests you can use truffle as a framework you can use foundry as a framework if you want to understand that please let me know in the youtube comments down below if you've been watching the video till now i'm sure you liked it please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have it if you want to send me a message contact me for some consultation or if you want to sponsor a video please send me an email my email is in the about section of my youtube page and if you have a specific question if you're stuck somewhere come join my discord server there are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out i hope to see you again next week till then bye bye